and this for this session on molecular interaction. And uh, though being on a Sunday afternoon, at least I can promise you that we will be hearing some exemplary talks from stalwarts of the field. Uh, a couple of uh, announcements just before we begin. Uh, so there's a storm going on right now in uh, Delhi and Noida. So in case there is a disruption um, in the connection, just allow us a couple of minutes and then sign up, sign up back again. It should work. Uh, but we have kind of uh, made um, provisions for that eventuality. But uh, I thought I should let everyone know. So um, the talks that we are going to hear today um, are going to be very critically important because of uh, the field of molecular interaction and it's spanning over uh, large implications from diseases to air for bio understanding biology, uh, even protein engineering. And uh, I think uh, COVID has also taught us a lot about the requirement to study uh, these interactions. And we uh, most of all must have heard of the ACE2 and spike interaction with the uh, COVID virus and the humans. And uh, this becomes a very pertinent topic to uh, host in this uh, summit. Today we are joined by three stalwarts of the field, uh, Professor Devnath, that would be followed with Professor Michael Gromia, and finally Professor Shandar Ahmed will be joining us. So to begin with, Professor Devnath, who is currently work, is a professor at Computational Biology in the Department of Computational and Data Science at ISC Bangalore. Uh, he works on a myriad uh, range of biological problems, which are, are related towards integrating experimental results and studying intricately the molecular interactions. His research interests are, spans from all the way from genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, drug discovery, algorithms. So he has a vast knowledge on this field. And his talk shall cover examples of the recent tools that have been developed in his lab, which are going to be probing the structure dynamics, the interactions, and basically its implications in biotechnology, health, and medicine. And uh, with this, I hand you over uh, the settings, Professor Devnath, and thank you for speaking to us today. Uh, Professor Devnath, I think you're mute. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to give a talk uh, in this health informatics uh, conference. I thank Professor Raghava for giving me this opportunity to present my work. So. Uh, to begin with, uh, you know, I will give a brief tools that uh, we already host in our lab. Uh, and uh, then I will move on to new and upcoming tools uh, that we are going to release soon. Uh, so for those of you who are interested in uh, existing tools, I will briefly give an overview, followed by new tools that you may find exciting. So if, my, if I may have the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, Shipra. Yeah, thank you so much. So as uh, I was introduced, uh, so my lab actually works uh, in a host of things. And uh, the whole idea, uh, of our lab is to you know, do a holistic analysis of biology. We do realize that uh, if we improve our understanding at the molecular level, then we have a higher chance of getting uh, the right you know, outcomes at the higher level. 
So this is uh, the basic philosophy that my lab follows. So as you can see that, you know, there is a big arrow which says error percolation, which means that if you do um, erroneous job at the genome or the transcriptome or the proteome level, so when you would want to, uh, you know, discover new phenotypes or make uh, epidemiologic analysis or tissue-based analysis, these would have a lot of noise and error in them. So we try to integrate different techniques, uh, make new algorithms, and uh, you know, uh, see you know how we can do things better. So that's the basic philosophy uh, in which my lab works. So uh, to begin with, I will tell you some of the areas that we have been working and uh, uh, list uh, you uh, the, some of the tools that you can use in my lab. And then I will introduce to you the new tools. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so here you can go and uh, visit the website yourself and look at uh, the existing tools. I'll quickly uh, tell you what they do uh, so that uh, in case it is of use to you, you may uh, come and, and uh, test it out. So uh, we have currently uh, three kinds of services that we provide. One is the web services, as a database service, and then the softwares that you can download and uh, execute locally at your desktop. So under the web services, we have uh, uh, a tool called DINFUNC. The DINFUNC, as the name suggests, is a assessment of function based on dynamics, okay? So as you may know, uh, you know, dynamics or the collective motion of the protein uh, is what determines function. So currently, uh, most of us, uh, what we try to do is uh, we try to build evolutionary-based uh, uh, inference using multiple sequence alignment or structural alignment. So this tool actually tries to go beyond that and tries to introduce dynamics uh, and see if dynamic signature or dynamical structural signatures can help you find function. So uh, about, uh, I think 7,000 proteins are already uh, incorporated in this uh, uh, website. So in case your protein uh, has a dynamical signature that matches with the existing protein stored in the database of DINFUNC, then you would be able to find it. And this tool uh, does not require any homologous information uh, or structural uh, similarity. So which means that if the motions of your protein are identical or matches to some extent, then precisely you would be able to find out which part of the protein has such uh, you know, signature uh, motions, and you can use that information to see, uh, you know, in a more detailed manner, if it is sensible and you can uh, dig out the function. So that's about Dean Funk. The next uh, uh, tool is IPAC. The two tools, IPAC and Compact, uh, both are actually uh, Mm, does similar things. Uh, they are published uh, in the same uh, paper. So IPAC is basically identification of quaternary structures from crystal, uh, you know, crystallographically derived, uh, you know, protein structures. So as you know, uh, the crystal lattice uh, often has the quaternary structure information, but uh, it is kind of difficult to find that information. The reason is that uh, the symmetry details from the crystal lattice are not uh, easy to find out. So in the year 2011, we had actually uh, built an algorithm to do this efficiently, and we compared it with the PISA, the existing uh, 
database that most people use, that it can effectively find uh, the quaternary structures better for up to uh, tetramers. But, uh, uh, but for hexamer and octamer, uh, it was not as efficient, but uh, up to tetramer, it did uh, far ahead than PISA. But uh, we have now an algorithm that actually uh, covers these lacunae that we had in IPAC. And this uh, should be actually now uh, more powerful than PISA. Not only that, uh, it will bring in a new thermodynamic perspective to the quaternary structure uh, problem. The reason being that uh, uh, quaternary structure is actually a thermodynamic uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, phenomena, which means that if you have a higher concentration, then you are likely to have uh, you know, a higher order symmetry, which means say if you have very high concentration as in a crystal lattice, you, know, you will get the highest possible quaternary structure. And uh, as the concentration will, uh, will reduce, then uh, you know, this, if it's an hexamer, it will actually break down into a monomer. So that's a hexamer monomer transition will happen. Whereas if it's a tetramer, as a C4 tetramer, okay, then obviously uh, the, the way uh, the axis runs, you could have a tetramer and a dimer together. So it could be a dimer of dimer, or it could be a tetramer and a monomer equilibrium. So based on the symmetry, you can have different kinds of you know, uh, quaternary structures that can be deduced uh, from the crystal lattice. So we are about to validate this algorithm and uh, we should be writing up the paper soon. So if you're interested in uh, puzzling out the quaternary structure, so new version of IPAC will come soon. And this is the heart of actually the molecular interaction problem uh, because we do need a thermodynamic perspective to understanding uh, the protein assembly because uh, this is what the molecular interaction is all about. There are two other uh, you know, the tools that we host, uh, these relate to protein-protein docking. Uh, actually, uh, both of them are part of the same pipeline. So probe is, uh, is about uh, scoring docking decoys and prune is basically an intermediate step to, uh, uh, to, uh, to reduce the number of decoys. So probe is a high, uh, you know, it's a high resolution scoring function and prune is basically a mid-level uh, coarse kind of a filtering function. So you can use both of them. Uh, they are available directly on the website. Next slide, uh, slide please. Okay, so uh, we have two databases that we host. One database is about intrinsic uh, terminators, uh, transcription terminators. Uh, this is obviously uh, got to do with formation of hairpins, uh, RNA hairpins, uh, while uh, the transcription is taking place. So this is all. It is also about molecular interaction because uh, hairpin formation and detection whether a hairpin will actually form or not is a similar problem actually, like how to dissect out a quaternary structure inside protein, because you need to uh, devise sophisticated potential energy functions. So the web gesture is basically uh, uh, a database of intrinsic terminators that we uh, published way back in 2011. We have actually an update to that database that I will be speaking about today. Uh, there's another database called Dockyard. So this Dockyard is again an old database. Uh, this is for people who are interested in uh, finding libraries for uh, benchmarking uh, protein, uh, protein uh, decoys. Next slide, please. We have a list of uh, softwares that you can download. Uh, among uh, the softwares, the oldest one is uh, NIP-NSD. It's published way back in 2010. 
this is about uh, finding packing and complementarity at protein uh, interface. So uh, many of you may be using uh, a program called NAXIS or there are other programs which also find the interface uh, area. But uh, when you want to actually do something in a high throughput manner, uh, especially when you want to evaluate inter interface areas for large, uh, you know, for a large number of decoys in thousands and millions, you need something fast. So uh, we developed this NIP NST. Uh, so NIP stands for actually normalized interface packing and NSC stands for normalized surface complementarity. So it basically it's a, it's a, it's a dual measure that uh, uh, is, is estimated and uh, a normalized measure is uh, output by this program. This is actually quite widely used by uh, the software, the docking community who want a rapid uh, estimate of uh, surface complementarity, packing and surface, surface complementarity. The next uh, uh, most recent uh, softwares that we have released is uh, the two softwares. These relate to metabolomics. And uh, these uh, one is about identifying metabolites from NMR data. Uh, NMR, uh, you know, HSQC data. And, uh, and the second one is actually using the NMR, uh, HSQC and chemical shift data directly to uh, estimate, uh, you know, pathways. So we have actually these are very uh, important and powerful programs and a lot of work is being done in this front so that uh, in coming days when NMR becomes more versatile, we should be able to apply this and directly from spectra, uh, online spectra, we should be able to obtain uh, you know, pathway information. And uh, you can do trapping experiments, uh, live cell experiments, and you can see how pathways get changed you know, uh, real time. So these are exciting things that uh, will also come up in updated versions later on. The most recent uh, mm, uh, program uh, released was in 2017. These, this relates to CGMM. This is actually a coarse grain molecular mechanics force field. So a lot of work regarding molecular dynamics is done in our lab. And uh, so in on course of uh, this uh, these investigations, we found that uh, there's a lot of uh, difficulty faced uh, when we use uh, force fields, uh, coarse grain force fields from uh, external sources. So taking those difficulties into consideration, we developed our own force field called CGMM. And uh, you can actually download this force field and the whole tutorial is given on the website which you can use to uh, uh, do your own coarse grain molecular dynamics. So this CGMM is the uh, key input to the DINFUNC uh, website. So whatever uh, traject molecular trajectories we have stored in the DINFUNC website were all created using CGMM uh, force feed. So about 7,000 uh, proteins are there. And uh, there will be updates on this uh, uh, DINFUNC soon because now we have more data on uh, oligomers, and we would include that in times to come. Okay, and uh, if you want to uh, know more, uh, please visit, please use, and if you have any difficulty, please feel free to uh, write to me. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay. So currently, uh, uh, we are working on several, uh, you know, problems. And uh, these are some of the tools that I'll be quickly going through in the remaining time. So as I said, uh, understanding RNA function, uh, basically transcription termination, the new update that we have, then understanding uh, protein function, um, basically what happens uh, during uh, molecular dynamics. So how to quickly uh, evaluate and find out. So that's all about uh, understanding protein function, 
then uh, we have built a new efficient method for structure determination using NMR restraints. So I will talk about methods uh, about that in methods and algorithms. So we also have a, a new method, graph-based method for uh, molecular transport, uh, vascular, uh, vascular transport. So which means transport of metabolites from tissues across tissues and across organs. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so uh, the first uh, tool, as I said, is, a, is basically an up, updated version of the web gesture. So web gesture uh, basically uh, was an initial effort in this direction, but it had uh, several lacunae. I will quickly tell that to you. It is uh, the basic paper of Interpin is published recently in scientific reports. If you're interested, you can also go and look at it. So this Interpin database is basically uh, currently the largest database uh, database of intrinsic uh, terminator sites for operons. Uh, it has about 25 million hairpins uh, for 12,745 published bacterial genomes and 92% of the genes have information, okay? The database paper is yet to be published. So that's why I said that this is a recent tool uh, that will be released soon. So what is uh, that we are trying to improve? So in 2000 in WebGester, uh, we published uh, similar things, but it had a coverage of only 30%, which would have meant that we did not know uh, how transcription termination was happening for the remaining, uh, you know, 70% of the sites. So uh, what we did is we investigated and we found that instead of single hairpin, uh, the, the intrinsic terminator sites actually used a cluster of hairpins. So 58% of all operons in the interpin database are of cluster. Another requirement that we uh, that was that is canonically proposed is that the hairpins must have a poly U trail at the base of the hairpin, but our analysis suggests that this is not essential. And most importantly, the new database uh, is rigorously validated against RNA-seq data. So we have done uh, rigorous analysis to justify that whatever we are doing uh, is uh, has uh, some semblance with the experimental data. Next slide, please. So uh, as you can see, we cover all the microbial genomes. So I won't go into the nitty gritty details, but the largest coverage is for actually the gamma proteobacteria for which uh, we have the largest information on genomes, but whatever is available currently in the database we have taken them all, okay? Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Yeah, thank you. So this is a summary of uh, what we have in the database. As you can see, uh, the gamma proteobacteria is the largest, uh, you know, the largest uh, contributor. And uh, what is important is that the algorithm that we have devised is independent of GC, uh, you know, GC percentage in the genome. So it was previously uh, suggested that uh, if you have a high GC content, then, you know, uh, the proportion of intrinsic termination also improves, but that is not necessarily so uh, as we found out. In fact, that depends on how sensitively you can uh, compute the hairpin. So uh, we do find uh, on average 58% of the cluster hairpins, but uh, individual phyla in some cases, uh, such as you can see in pharmacules, the single hairpins dominate, like 56% are single and cluster hairpin is 44. But on average, uh, if we take across all microbial genome, it's 58. So we have done all the nitty gritty analysis and the data is there. And what is also important is that we didn't find hairpin for some of the uh, 
intrinsic termination sites. So either these uh, need more sensitive hairpin detection, or probably these have extrinsic, uh, you know, row-based uh, termination. So we will try to see if we can improve these things further. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, so uh, this is just a snip, snippet of the data from the database. Uh, most of the termination sites are just after the stop code on and uh, rarely go beyond 100 uh, bases downstream of the stop code on. And this is true for both single and uh, cluster hairpins. Uh, the cluster hairpins are more dominant. Uh, the blue one is for the cluster hairpin. Next slide, please. Uh, so if you want to uh, find information from the database, uh, you basically need to uh, enter the NCBI ID for the desired bacteria. If you are not aware of the NCBI ID, you can view the list and from the list you can enter the details. So once you enter the details, next slide please. Uh, so a summary will come out. A summary will tell you, you know, how, what's the genome size, number of operons in it, and what's uh, uh, how many predicted as cluster and single, and the distance from the stop codon. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, you can actually get uh, details, individual details in a tab tabular format, or you can actually have a genome view. Next slide, please. So this is a genome view. So basically uh, this is uh, built upon the IGV uh, genome browser. So you can uh, you know, zoom in into every part of the genome and figure out uh, which, uh, you know, uh, which one, uh, which genes are of your interest. And you can click uh, there. If you click, then you will get more description. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is an example uh, what you will get. So you will basically get the sequence and the hairpin. And if you need more information about the structure in three dimension, that is also possible. So if you click on the structure, you will get a uh, window uh, where you can uh, rotate uh, this. For some cases, you may not uh, uh, get this window there is another website where you can copy this information and you can get the uh, structure. Next slide. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, an, a snippet from the browser. Okay, so you can look at the hairpin. So uh, basically, uh, this work is about detecting hairpin sensitively and make sure that, uh, you know, we can predict the termination sites efficiently. The whole motivation is to actually uh, foray into RNA-based, uh, you know, inferences in future. So, uh, and for that, we are actually uh, trying uh, to improve the hairpin detection first, uh, so that we can next foray into uh, siRNA and other kinds of uh, RNA in a structure-based uh, approach. Uh, so this is basically in this direction. Next slide. Okay, so the next tool that we'll cover is about uh, molecular dynamics and function. So this uh, tool is again, uh, an upcoming tool will be published soon. Uh, so all these papers that, uh, all these tools that I'm showing you are the, all the papers are under review. So you will get to know them soon. Uh, so this is called MD Davis. This is an interactive data visualization of protein molecular dynamics. So this is very useful when you do large number of, uh, you know, uh, molecular dynamics and you want to do a comparison. So this comparison is uh, very difficult and is not possible uh, because there are no tools available currently uh, to make our life easy. Uh, so for most of uh, us use uh, the Gromax package to do simulations. But for those of you who, who do simulations in other package, you can use MD Traj to actually uh, convert the, the trajectories into the Gromax format and you can use the tool. So what do we get in this tool? Uh, next slide, please. 
so uh, landscapes so this is something very important so we always uh, want to compare the landscapes but it is very difficult to compare the landscapes together so this tool actually compares the landscapes together and these are interactive which means you can rotate each uh, uh, of them together and you can see uh, you know what are the features whether there are two wells three wells and uh, so there's a projection that uh, goes on the rg rmsd plane so you can figure out you know how deep the wells are and how you could infer uh, the dynamics of the protein and these are very helpful in understanding you know the protein flexibility next slide please uh, there are other kinds of graphical in, uh, inferences and also inferences about uh, secondary structures you can do so what this tool does is that you can basically if you have say 10 uh, simulations you can load all the 10 simulations together and all kinds of graphs you can a data a graphical data you can load and then on the right hand side you can see a legend right so you can click on the particular legend and as you click it will activate that graph will activate so which means that visually you can compare you know uh, whatever you want you know and this is a very powerful way of making comparisons and there's a tool that also aligns uh, you know the 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 sequences which means that for some reason if you had a mutation in which say uh, insertion or deletion happen uh, so there can be shift right in the structures uh, so the the tool will also automatically align it and after alignment it will uh, plot it for you so this is a very useful tool uh, for finding out which regions have what effect uh, due to mutations and other changes and uh, in a dynamics environment. Next slide, please. Uh, you can also plot the electrodynamics uh, in this tool. So this is, uh, you know, this is a snippet out of the trajectories. So for this, you would actually need to install several other software uh, like MS, uh, the molecular surface software, Delphi software, and, and visualization is done using Pymol. And uh, the details obviously will be available to you uh, once the paper is published, but this is just an uh, introduction. So uh, if you are keen on doing this kind of analysis, especially you know, what kind of changes happen uh, in the active site uh, during the dynamics and there, that, that can explain the catalytic activity, so this is the way to go. Um, next is contact map as you can see uh, so hydrogen bonds which hydrogen bonds are more stable which hydrogen bonds are unstable uh, so these uh, kind of information it can also be found okay so uh, this finishes md davis i'll quickly uh, browse you through the other uh, two remaining tools next slide please yes uh, so next one is about protein structure determination so many of you have a structural biology background so those of you doing extra crystallography based uh, structure determination use programs like coot or uh, ccp4 uh, you know nih explore okay so uh, similarly nmr people you know when they solve structures they use programs like cyana uh, you know, explore NMR and things like that. Now, the point is that uh, when you use uh, uh, Cyana or uh, NIH Explore uh, NMR, you know, these use a force field to refine structures. And when they use force field to refine structures, many of the uh, contextual uh, experimental information get lost. So this is, uh, this is a problem in the structure solution that has been there for uh, many years and nobody has taken care of it. So we have worked on this problem and, and provide a solution. Uh, as you know, X-ray structures are just a snapshot. So NMR structures are more realistic, but still when we do refinement, if uh, 
the physiological structure is distorted, then we are losing precious contextual information, right? So this uh, will uh, solve that uh, problem. So next slide, please. Uh, so the salient features, I'll quickly go through, I'm running out of time. So Dream uses, so Dream is the name of the tool. So Dream is basically distance restraint uh, and energy assistant uh, modeling. So Dream uses the bottom-up approach to build core protein structure respect, respecting the NMR derived distance constraints. It also refines the protein structures uh, respecting the NMR distance constraints and regions with inad inadequate NMR distance constraints are flexibly modeled theoretically from using loop modeling principles. Uh, the structures show small but significant differences in the built models and the observed differences have functional relevance as we have discovered from molecular dynamic simulation studies. The method is fast and robust to data deletion and we have validated it extensively with over 129 protein structures of diverse lengths covering 106 unique folds uh, as described by Cath ID. All the structures obviously uh, satisfy the uh, classical quality parameters. Next slide, please. So this is just a snippet. So the trick in the game is what is called a one-shot fragment assembly. So you can see on the left-hand side on the top panel, individual fragments that we built using uh, NMR dis uh, distance restraint uh, based on covalent um, information and NMR NOE uh, distance data. And then if we do uh, fragment assembly in, in a given sequence, then that will never give you the right result. So the next green structure or the blue structure is actually wrong one when you try to fragment, uh, to assemble the fragments in a given order. So uh, we have developed a one-shot assembly and that is the pink, the, the magenta structure. And you can see that, uh, uh, and you can see that we, uh, you know, get the right structure if we do a one-shot assembly. So this one-shot assembly basically uh, always gives you a uh, unique uh, structure. And that is what we desire. Next slide, please. So you can see the differences. So uh, the left hand, the, the pink or the magenta color that you see on the left hand side is from cyana. You can see a bent helix, which is a wrong uh, structure because the dashed line just below the golden colored model is from us. The dashed line, the restraint is absent in the experimental data. So that cannot be a helix. So uh, these are the small differences uh, that we find. Uh, so for example, in the next uh, right-hand panel, you can see that uh, after eight, uh, in, the, in the magenta model, there is no a beta sheet, but in uh, our model, there is a beta sheet, which means that uh, you know, the core structure, the core secondary structure differs. And this difference makes quite a lot of difference. As we'll see next. Uh, next slide, please. So you can see in the core regions, the background, the gap regions means uh, there is no, uh, not much, uh, you know, uh, experiment data. The white regions are having core, uh, have, have uh, experiment data. So you can see under the white regions also, there is a difference in, uh, you know, RMSD. So if that is so, which means that the fluctuation uh, fluctuations are different and because of this difference uh, you know the inferences that you will get through molecular dynamics if you have a different initial structure uh, will lead to different interpretation and this is what the paper or our model talks about next slide please uh, so this is uh, just an example i don't have actually time to get into the details basically i'm trying to show you uh, all the detailed analysis we have done based on the uh, uh, based on the uh, energy minimization using MD Davis plotting all the data and then uh, comparing the structures. So we have uh, so this paper is going to come out soon. Next slide. Yeah, so it's the same kind of analysis. So 
uh, we do we have done this extensively for many proteins and we consistently see that whatever we have done leads to very useful uh, uh, you know information because func function and flexibility are intrinsically related and uh, and if you have small differences in the secondary structure in the core structure it creates a lot of change in flexibility in the loop regions which are functionally important so this uh, tool will help you in in you know uh, uh, dissecting those out next slide please uh, so this is basically a, a, a you know a summary of what we have done on structure quality i'm running out of time just five minutes so i will skip this slide and tell you the last tool uh, that we have. Uh, so this uh, last tool is about vasculature transport. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, you know due to poor connection, I had to sh uh, show you a PDF. Uh, but basically, uh, this uh, picture was of a uh, simulation which showed actually the transport graph of uh, molecular species as cross vasculature. And we have uh, designed this uh, uh, tool uh, and which has several interesting features. Next slide, please. Uh, so these features are basically, you know, uh, are that, you know, it, it implements a network of network paradigm, uh, which is what our body is. And it can scale to any level, which means that you can uh, model uh, cellular networks, you can model uh, vasculatures, and you can do multi-species, you know, a transport from cell to vasculature, vasculature back to cell, organ to organ, and you can do this do this at any scale because of the graph-based, uh, uh, you know, approximation, which means that regions where you want to do uh, the analysis in detail you describe the graph uh, you know as per your need and where you want don't want much uh, information you uh, you know design a node accordingly in the graph and we have rigorously validated it against a commercial software called comsol and uh, this uh, software is uh, going to be very useful in the longer run so we have uh, restricted and uh, it's a free distribution, and this would be offered only on request from the authors after publication. Uh, I think I'm done, and uh, have three minutes left. So uh, before I uh, finish, uh, the interpin. Sorry about the typo there. The interpin uh, uh, database was done by the student named Swati. MD Davis is done by Debojoti. Uh, Dream is done by Niladri uh, in collaboration with Professor Unal Chaudhary, and SimGraph is done by Deepa in collaboration with Professor S. Raha. I am happy to take questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor.